Okay, in this video we're going to look at how to loop through a range of numbers. And so we're going to use the for each loop. And you can start by downloading the Loop Drills AIA file and open it up into your App Inventor projects. So let's just take a brief look at the setup here. We have on the screen, we have an output label. So this is our output label where it says text for label one. That's where our result is going to go. And then we have a apply button that we'll use in order to execute our loop. So pretty basic setup here. And I'm going to switch over to the blocks mode. Right, and we don't have any coding blocks set up in here as of yet. So our algorithm is when the apply button is clicked, we want it to clear out the text that's in the text label. And then we're just going to loop through numbers 1 to 10 and display them in our text label. So to start everything, we need an event, and our event is going to be with our apply button. So when the apply button is clicked, the first thing is clear the text out of the output label. So we're going to select the output label and set output label text to, and let's put in an empty string. So that will set it to empty. Now we want it to loop through the numbers 1 through 10 and put the value into the label. So we're going to use a for each number loop. Now the for each and the looping blocks are all in the control blocks. So I'm going to click on control and you can see here we have our few different loops. We have for each number, for each item, and a while loop. So we're going to start with the for each number and snap that in here. Now you can see we automatically get some blocks in here. It starts at 1, it's going to end at 5, and it's going to count by 1's. So when it goes through this, it's going to start at 1 and then it's going to increment by 1. So then when it comes through the loop again, it'll be 2 and then it'll be 3. So when it gets to 5, it's going to stop. So what we wanted to do is, as it goes through here, we want to, again, set the output label text to. So I'm going to get another output label text block, and I'm going to set it to number, and we'll get number. All right. so what happens is, when it encounters this loop, it's going to start at 1, and 1 gets set to our variable number. So then it comes down here and it changes the text in the output label to 1. Now, since this is a loop, it comes back up here and it starts the loop again. But it's counting by 1, so now it changes 1 to 2. So number becomes 2, sets the output label text to 2. Then it increments it to 3 number is set to 3, puts that in the output label, adds 1, so now it becomes 4, number is 4, puts that into the label, increments by 1, so now it's 5, the number is 5, it puts 5 in the output label, and since we are counting to 5, then it stops. So let's take a look and see what our result looks like. So let me bring in my emulator, right? And so we have our text label and apply. And so when we click this, our result shows just five. And that's because this is looping through here, but it's going through the loop so fast that we don't see one, two, three, four, five. We just see five because that's the last number that's in here. So how can we get this to show us the number 1 and 2 and 3 and so forth. So let's make a little modification in our output label text. So I'm going to come over to our text blocks and I'm going to grab the join block and I'm going to snap that in here 
and we're going to tell it to take the value of what's in the output label. So we're going to set output label text, right? We're going to get whatever is in the output label, put the number that's in there, and we need one more little slot in here. So if you click on this mutator button, we can drag another string in here, and then we can close it. And uh, we're going to take the value that is in the text label, put the number in, and then we're going to put a space in between. So I'm just going to grab this empty string here, and I want to make sure I put a space, like actual hit the space bar. Now let's test this out and see what happens when we click apply. Right, so now it goes through, and I'll, I'll walk through this in a little more detail example since we can see the output here. Right, so it reaches the, the loop and it starts at one, so one gets assigned to number. So now in our output label, we're going to join whatever is in the label, which at the beginning isn't anything because we've already cleared it out. We put in the number, so it puts in one, and then it puts in a space. So now remember this, our label contains, when it goes through the loop the first time, it contains one space. So now it continues back up here and says, okay, take number, increase it by one. So now it is two. So the output label has one space. So it's gonna put in one space, two space. So when it goes through that loop, it's one space, two space. So now two gets incremented to three. The number is three, so then it takes the value one space, two space, three space. And it keeps going until it reaches five. So then the last thing that prints in here is one space, two space, three space, four space, five space. But now our algorithm was to print out the numbers from 1 to 10. So think about this for a second. What would you change in here so that we would be able to print from 1 to 10? Pause this, test it out in your app, and then we'll come in and show you a solution. Okay, hopefully you were able to get that to work. All we need to do here is to change this from 5 to 10 because that's the highest we want it to go. So if we change that to 10, let's try running this. We'll click apply and here we have 1 to 10. Okay, now here's something to try. What if we wanted to count backwards? We want to go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. What do you think you would do? Again, pause the video, try it out, and then come back here to see the solution. Okay, how did you do? Let's walk through a solution. So here we were counting up from one to 10 and increasing the value each time it goes through the loop by one. So to go the other way, we wanna count from 10 to 1 and then each time it goes through the loop we want it to subtract 1. We want to say 10 and then minus 1 and then it will be 9 minus 1 is 8 minus 1 is 7 so let's put in a minus sign and then let's test it out. Okay here we go so 10 9, 8, 7, 6, all the way down to 1. So the for each number is good to use for a loop when you know how many times you want it to loop through something. And we can use the number values in here to control things. Now you can play around with the different values in here. We don't always, as you can see here, we don't always have to go by 1 or negative 1. We could go by twos, or we could count by negative twos. So what do you think this would display? Try it out, and then come back out and see if your result is the same as this solution.
All right, so if we have 10 and we're counting to 1, but we're going by negative 2s, you would think we'd start by 10, minus 2, 8, minus 2, 6, minus 2, 4, minus 2, 2, minus 2. Hmm, what's the last number since we're going to 1? Let's test it. All right? 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. All right, so when it's 2 and we subtract 2, that makes us to 0, but we're only counting to 1. If we change this to 0 and then run it, then this will stop at 0. So it takes a little practice, but the more you use it and the more you try to think through the logic of it, the more it will make sense.